What's up everyone, we are back with another big day of MLB action here on Wednesday, April 10th. Not gonna lie, we got a little bit unlucky on a lot of our Tuesday plays. We had teams winning by one run instead of two, and we had them against the run line. We got a push in that Seattle-Toronto over-under. We saw Atlanta only win by one. We saw Cleveland lose that game straight up. That was not a good look for them at all. Luckily, our biggest bet of the day, the Dodgers minus one and a half, that one came through for us. So nice to catch the biggest bet of the day, especially on a day where we're just not on the right side of things in some tough situations for sure. We do still Still have Houston at Kansas City under eight and a half. That one's live for us. So hopefully that comes through. They're about to head into extra innings with things tied up at three apiece. So hopefully we don't see some three run home run or some any other weird stuff to mess that up for us. Hopefully we can get the win in that one. We also got screwed over by the Pirates and another blown save in that game. So all in all, not the best day, but we do cash our biggest pick of the day, and that helps things out a lot. We have another solid MLB slate to analyze here today, so let's dive back in and find some winners. Hit that like button to keep these daily picks coming, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. We appreciate all the support lately, but still, despite all the new subs we've been getting, over 70% of our viewers aren't subscribed to the channel. I know we can bump that number up a little bit. It's 100% free, and will keep you from missing out on our daily picks. These videos are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. Click the link in the description to go over there and join our free email list, and check out our top confidence plays on all the major sports, which are brought to you by our whole team of experts. Comment below with all the bets you're looking at today to get our best advice on them. We respond to absolutely every single comment, so let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our final picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game of the day. We've got the Los Angeles Dodgers going up against the Minnesota Twins in some day game action. The Dodgers, they were our main bet yesterday, and they came through for us, winning 6-3 to in that one. Glass now had an amazing start, striking out 14 in that game. We saw the Twins continue to struggle hitting the ball, and we're looking at another game in this season. Series. We've got the Dodgers handing the ball to Bobby Miller. He comes into this game. He'll be making his third start of the year. It's been a tale of two starts with this guy against the Cardinals. He was absolutely dominant, lasting six innings, only giving up two hits and striking out 11. But then playing at Chicago, things did not go well at all. He only lasted two and two-thirds innings, gave up five earned runs, a home run, had two walks and three strikeouts. He could not go deep into the game. He was getting absolutely shelled in that one. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can bounce back here, going up against a Twins team that is not hitting the ball extremely well. The Dodgers are hitting the ball extremely well, though. They're raking right now. They're leading the league in runs scored. They've scored 73 runs over the course of the season. They're sporting a 279 team batting average overall. That's good for second in the league. And their slugging percentage is fantastic. It's nice to get off to a good start at the plate, and a lot of them are doing that. We see Will Smith absolutely raking. We see Mookie Betts hitting the cover off the ball. He's got five home runs already this season. He's batting 380 on the year. Things in general are just going great for the Dodgers. The Twins, on the other hand, are not having as good of a time. They're only 3-6 and six on the season. They've already lost the first two games of this series, and they are handing the ball in this one to Chris Paddock. He comes into this game. He'll be making his second start of the season. His first one didn't go terrible, but didn't go amazing. He gave up six hits over only four innings pitched against the Brewers. He gave up two earned runs, a home run, had two walks and two strikeouts. It'll be interesting to see how he fares against an insanely hot-hitting Dodgers team that is just knocking around everybody they go up against it feels like. And run support kind of seems like a big ask at this point from the Twins. They are just not hitting the ball well. They've only scored 23 runs over the course of the season. They're a league worst team batting average of 181. So just devastatingly bad across the board. This team is not putting up any hits. They only have one guy who's really hitting the ball, really seeing the ball right now. And that's Alex Kirilov. He's batting 355. So he's hitting the ball, but nobody else on the team really seems to be doing anything positive at this point. Their leading RBI guy is Ryan Jeffers. He's only got five RBIs and he's hitting 120 on the season. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Dodgers are a pretty big favorite. They're minus one and a half to get 110 in this game, and we see an over under of nine, so a little bit higher of a number. We see the Dodgers are nine, four, and one to the over this season, with the Twins three and six to the under. But what we're looking at once again today is the run line in this one. Minnesota's only three and six against the run line. I'm expecting a bounce back performance from Bobby Miller. He's a young guy, so we can't expect him to be lights out every single night. But going up against a Twins team that's having a hard time hitting the ball, I think. I think we can expect big things from him, and we can definitely expect big things from the Dodgers' offense. They're hitting the ball extremely well right now. Give me the Dodgers, minus one and a half. I think they find a way to win this game comfortably, going up against the Twins, who are looking like one of the worst teams in the majors right now. Next up, we got another day game. We got the Philadelphia Phillies going on the road to take on the St. Louis Cardinals. The Phillies took the loss in game two of this series. They lost three to nothing to the Cardinals. They were not able to force a run across the plate. Nothing good going on for them in that one. And they're going to have to hope that they can change things up here, handing the ball to Aaron Nola. He comes into this game. It's been a tale of two starts for this guy, and his first start of the season. He got absolutely shelled by the Atlanta Braves. He gave up seven runs in that game, two home runs, had three strikeouts, 
He gave up 11 hits in four and a third innings. Not exactly what you're hoping to see from a guy in his first outing of the year, but he backed that up with a very solid performance in his second start, dominating the Washington Nationals for five and two thirds innings. He only gave up two hits in that game. He did have four walks and four strikeouts, so a little bit of control issues, but not too bad. You'll definitely take that every day of the week. If you can get five and two thirds scoreless innings, that is not going to be a problem. The Phillies hitting did not look good last night. They got dominated by Sonny Gray in his first start of the season, so he's a very solid pitcher. I guess there's no shame in that. We would have thought he would have had some problems here out of the gate, but he absolutely did not. The Phillies hitting hasn't been atrocious this year. Bryce Harper's gotten off to a decent start. We see Brandon Marsh hitting the ball well, but just in general, this team isn't scoring a ton of runs. They're hoping they can turn that around in this game, though, going up against the Cardinals and Lance Lynn. The Cardinals have to be very happy with what they saw from what they hope will be their ace pitcher in that shutout win over the Phillies, but now they have to hand the ball to Lance Lynn, hoping that he can have a good outing, and so far, it's been mixed returns here from Lynn. He did last four innings, gave only four hits, and had five strikeouts against the Dodgers in his first start of the season, but that was quite a while ago, it feels like, and against the Marlins, he did not have a good time. Yeah, guys, against the lowly Miami Marlins, he gave up eight hits and four earned runs, three home runs. He did have seven strikeouts, but that's all happening in four and two-thirds innings, so not exactly smooth sailing for him in that one, and the Cardinals in general have not really been an offensive powerhouse. They've been pretty middle of the road or honestly below middle of the road. Their power numbers are very bad. Their batting average in general is not looking too hot. Brendan Donovan is actually leading this team with a 250 batting average like that is not what they're looking for we need Paul Goldschmidt to get off to a better start and just in general the Cardinals have to be seeing the ball a little bit better even here in the early goings looking at the numbers for this game we see the Phillies are a sizable favorite in this one they're minus 140 in this game Philly you can get plus 130 on that the over under in this one's at eight this is kind of a tough game to peg guys we saw a very low scoring game from them in game two we have to expect the offenses to bounce back a little bit but neither one of these offenses is actually looking amazing and what are we really going to get out of Lance Lynn in this game I do feel more confident in Nola in this one for sure. Lance Lynn could have a decent start. He's shown flashes of being good this season, or at least one flash. This is a tough game to figure out though, guys. I think we lean towards the Phillies minus 140 just to win this game outright. You could also give me a small taste of the under, I guess, but I'm not too excited about that. Give me the Phillies minus 140 as my small lean, but this is a game we're going to need to see a little bit more of both of these teams to have a really strong lean on which way they're headed. Next up, we've got an early afternoon game. We've got the Seattle Mariners taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. The Mariners are 0-2 in this series so far. They're looking to avoid the sweep here. They lost game one, 5-2. They lost game two, 5-3. to three. They're going to be hoping that Logan Gilbert can stem the tide here. He, in his two starts this season, he's looked decent, but not elite. His first game was definitely his better one. He lasted seven innings against the Boston Red Sox, only gave up a single run and had eight strikeouts in that outing. So a very, very solid day, but he did not continue that trend in his second start of the season. He got knocked around by the Milwaukee Brewers a decent amount. He gave up four earned runs, three home runs in that game. So that's a big concern. He had seven strikeouts in that one though. So he's got strikeout stuff. There's no doubt about it, but they're going to need him to find some consistency and pitch a little bit better here up going up against the Toronto Blue Jays who come into this game trying to build a little winning streak here. They've looked good now in two games in a row, trying to get the taste of losing that series to the Yankees out of their mouths. They're going to be handing the ball to Yusei Kikuchi who looked really good his last time out. He only gave up four hits over five and a third innings to the New York Yankees. So shutting down that lineup is pretty solid work. He had seven strikeouts, only two walks in that start so once again very good numbers a bounce back performance a little bit from his first outing against the Tampa Bay Rays where he did give up three earned runs but just in general the guy hasn't looked bad so far this season he did take the loss in that Tampa Bay game but just in general he's sporting an ERA of under three he's got 11 strikeouts over two starts not looking bad this lefty coming from Japan looking pretty good right now and we're seeing a little bit of a positive trend here from the Blue Jays hitting they've scored five runs in each of their last two games so that's a little bit of something. Their bat team batting average still not looking too hot. Their overall run score not looking amazing. But I think we're finally seeing a positive trend here for this group. They should be hitting the ball a little bit better. We see Justin Turner's off to a pretty good start. We see George Springer with a couple of home runs, but he's still batting over 200. So we're not exactly going to write home about that. But we do think this is a team that can have a little bit of a better offensive day today, at least in theory. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see that it's a pretty even matchup. We see Seattle, if you take them minus one and a half, you can get them at plus 155. The over under in this game, is set at eight. Right now, neither one of these teams have like huge trends towards the over or the under. We do 
QC Seattle is only three and nine this season against the run line. So that's a little bit of something to look at. We could maybe trend towards taking Toronto plus one and a half, but I don't really like that one too much, guys. I would rather take Toronto straight up to just win this game at minus 110 or take the under in this one, under eight. I think both pitchers could be in for solid outings. We haven't seen either offense really look that elite. Give me Toronto minus 110 in this one. I think they find a way to win this game relatively comfortably. I'm not taking them on the run line though. Just give me Toronto minus 110 in this one. I think we see Kikuchi have a very good start and the Blue Jays cruise to another win. Next up, we've got the Washington Nationals going on the road to take on the San Francisco Giants. We see the game two of this series hasn't quite finished up yet, but it's looking like a relatively close one. We see Washington up two to one here in the fifth inning, so that could still go either way. Looking at this pitching matchup overall, we see the Nationals are handing the ball to Patrick Corbin. He's looked pretty bad through his first two starts of the year, guys. Not gonna lie, he got banged around by the Cincinnati Reds. Playing in Cincinnati, so we could cut him some slack for that one, giving up seven hits and four earned runs in that game. If he hadn't backed that up by getting absolutely shelled by the Philadelphia Phillies, he gave up nine hits, four earned runs in that one. He did have six strikeouts, but three walks also. He lasted six innings in that game, so he was out there battling for quite a while, but man, that's a lot of runs to give up. That's a lot of hits to give up, more importantly, so we're gonna be looking for him to have maybe a bounce back performance. That's what Washington's gonna really need from this lefty, but he's going up against the Giants, who haven't gotten off to the best start to their season, that's for sure. They're gonna be handing the ball to Jordan Hicks in this one. Hicks has gotten off to a pretty reasonable start to his year overall. In two starts, both of them against San Diego, he pitched five and seven innings in those starts respectively. He gave up only three hits and had six strikeouts in the first start. In the second start, you'd think they'd do a little bit better against him, but he lasted seven innings in that game, five hits, only one earned run and five strikeouts. The guy is looking very, very good. He off to a fantastic start, which is more than I can say for the San Francisco hitters who are definitely in the bottom third of the league so far this year. They're not exactly having an offensive outburst tonight either. So we're a little bit concerned about the amount of offense that the Giants are gonna be able to produce to back him up in this game. Right now, we're looking at San Francisco minus one and a half to get plus 105. The Giants are big favorites in this game. They're minus 195 straight up. So that's not exactly something we're interested in this one. Neither one of these teams is off to a very hot hitting start. So give me the under in this game. I think we see decent pitching from both guys. I am worried about Corbin in this one for sure. He has not had a good time, but I don't think we'll see the Giants score a ton of runs because they're just not hitting the ball very well. And I definitely think we see Jordan Hicks have a good outing. So if you want to take the Giants at that big number, I totally get it. But against the run line. I'm definitely not interested in that. They're only four and seven against the run line. So give me the under in this game, under eight and a half. I think that's where the value is. Next up, we got the Tampa Bay Rays going on the road to take on the Los Angeles Angels. They're in the fourth inning right now of the second game of this series. We see Tampa Bay is up four to two in that one. We're going to dive right here into the pitching matchup though. We've got the Rays handing the ball to, to Zach Littell. He's looked very solid in his two starts this season against the Blue Jays. He went six innings, gave up zero runs, had only four hits allowed, six strikeouts, and two walks. So that's a pretty solid outing, and he backed it up with another good outing. Despite playing at Coors Field, he lasted five innings, only gave up five hits and one earned run, and struck out five in that game. He hasn't registered a result this season so far, but he's sporting an ERA of only .82, and the big right-hander is looking pretty good here out of the gate, which is a little bit more than I can say for the Tampa Bay batters. They're very, very middle of the road this season overall. Yeah, they've piled up four runs so far against the Angels, so maybe they'll have a big night. Maybe this will be a breakout evening for them, for their bats in general, but right now, I'm not very scared of this offense. They're not producing a ton of runs. They're going to need to produce some runs in this game going up against the Angels, who are off to a 6-4 and four start to their season, and they're going to be handing the ball to Jose Soriano, who will be making his first official start of the season. He's pitched a total of six innings, working in kind of like middle relief. He did not have a good time against the Boston Red Sox. His last time out, he got kind of knocked around. In his first outing against the Baltimore Orioles, he did last three innings and not give up any runs, so that's a pretty solid outing. But that outing against the Red Sox definitely concerns us, and the fact that he's going to be starting a game when that's not really the role that he's necessarily used to when pitching for the big club. The Angels are definitely going to feel like they need to produce some offense in this one. They've been slightly better than like league average. Obviously, we see Mike Trout out there every day. He's looking great. But other than that, not a lot of positives to find for this team, except for the fact their record looks kind of okay here out of the gates, but they did have a sweep against the Marlins on there. So we're not exactly going to write home about the Angels unless we see some really long-term trends of them playing well. And by them, I mean players that aren't named Mike Trout. So just in general, this is an offense. We look to produce a ton of runs. And looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Los Angeles Angels are slight underdogs in this game, which is not at all surprising given the fact that they're on 
by far the wrong side of this pitching matchup. We do see the Rays haven't gotten off to the best start. If you take the minus one and a half, you can get them at plus 135, which is a little bit enticing. But once again, we're kind of looking at the over under in this game. I definitely tend to look towards the under. I think we see Latell have another good start. So that also makes me think about the Tampa Bay Rays. So give me the Rays minus 125 and also give me a decent sized taste of the under nine in this game. I think it'll be relatively low scoring and I think we'll see the Rays come away with a win against an Angels team that could get it like a home run or something like that from Trout, but it's going to be one of those very sad instances where, oh, Trout homers and now the Angels are down five to one. Moving right along, we got the Chicago White Sox going up against the Cleveland Guardians. We saw Chicago get the very surprising seven to five win in game one of this series. In game two of this series, we saw Dominic Fletcher hit a two run double. That was pretty solid. They snapped their five game losing streak with that seven to five win. And they're going to be handing the ball here to Eric Fetty, hoping that he can have a good outing. This guy is kind of a veteran at this point. He's 31 years old, and we would be hoping that he can continue what has been a pretty good start to his season overall. Against the Tigers, he didn't have a lights out outing for sure. He gave up two home runs in that game, but he had seven strikeouts. And when you only give up two runs over the course of four and two thirds innings, it's not exactly a disaster. His team did lose that game, though, which is kind of unfortunate for them. They wasted that relatively solid outing but in his second outing he looked very very good in five innings he only gave up a single earned run only had four strikeouts in that one and it was against the Kansas City Royals so not exactly a monster offensive team but nevertheless that's a pretty solid start a decent start to the year overall an ERA of under three 11 strikeouts nothing we're going to turn our noses up at and definitely nothing that the Chicago White Sox should be turning their noses up at given the fact that they are the worst team in the MLB in terms of runs scored in terms of team batting average and teams of on base percentage they are just getting absolutely destroyed every single night it seems like every opposing pitcher just has a good day against them obviously they did just get that win so they have to be very relieved to get off the schneid there but they're only two and nine on the season overall Bybee comes into this game he's also gotten off to a pretty reasonable start to his year he handled the oakland a's relatively well he did have some control issues in that game for sure five walks is not really an acceptable number but he only gave up three earned runs so if you don't really have your best stuff you only give up three earned runs i guess it's not really a disaster but he really figured things out against the minnesota twins albeit not the best hitting team in the league, but he's going up against another very poor hitting team, so you can't exactly be too worried about that. It, he had nine strikeouts in that game and five and a third innings. He only gave up a single earned run, and that was on a home run, so I think we can expect him to be striking some batters out, improve that ERA a little bit. He's at 1-0 and on the season, so he'll be looking to hopefully pick up another win, and we see Cleveland in a definite bounce back spot here. After losing game two of the series, 7-5, to five, we're definitely going to be back on Cleveland, minus one and a half in this one. I know it burned us last time, guys, but I think they find a way in this game pretty comfortably. I think they've definitely got the better side of this pitching match. Up. I think we'll see a very solid day from Bybee. I think we see Cleveland's bats come alive in this one. Give me Cleveland minus one and a half. You get about 115 will be the price on that. If you wanted to take a little taste of the under, I would definitely understand that. We see Chicago, not a hot hitting team at all. They're only, they're seven, three and one towards the under this season. And Cleveland's not exactly piling it up. I don't think they're going to score like eight or nine runs all on their own. So give me Cleveland minus one and a half in this game and a taste of the under if you want it. Next up, we have the Chicago Cubs playing on the road against the San Diego Padres. They're playing right now in game two of this series. It's currently 0-0 zero zero in the bottom of the third, so we can't really draw a whole lot of conclusions from that game, but we saw game one be kind of an offensive slugfest. We saw the Cubs end up losing that game 9-8, to eight, but they're hoping they can change their fortunes in this one by handing the ball to Kyle Hendricks. He has not gotten off to a good start to the season at all, though, guys. He got shelled by the Texas Rangers, giving up nine hits and only three and two-thirds innings. He gave up five earned runs in that one, and he gave up five earned runs in his second start of the season, also getting shelled by the LA Dodgers. Obviously, getting shelled by the Dodgers isn't too big of an embarrassment. That's going to happen to a lot of pitchers this season, but two game sample of bad starts I would say terrible starts not exactly what the Cubs were hoping to see from Hendricks and just in general Chicago has been hitting the ball really really well here out of the gate so they would probably be hoping that their record could be even better than the six and four that they're sporting right now we've seen Ian Happ get off to a very good start we've seen Bellinger get off to a decent start so just in general this team's offense is on a good track but right now they can't feel very good about handing the ball to Hendricks we see the Padres they're going to be handing the ball in this game to Dylan Cease who's had two relatively solid starts both of them were against the San Francisco Giants. In the first one, he only lasted four and two thirds, so not going deep into the game, that's for sure. But he only allowed two earned runs, only two hits in that one, and he had six strikeouts. In the second start, he looked much better. He lasted six innings in that one, gave up two earned runs, but had seven strikeouts and two walks, only allowed four hits overall. So the guy is doing pretty decent work out there. The Padres hitting has been very, very good. They've scored the second most runs in the MLB here to start the season. Slugging percentage is looking good. Team batting average and on base percentages are both looking very solid. We saw Tatis hit a two-run go-ahead home run in that first game of this series. So just in general, this team is definitely hitting the ball well. Looking at the numbers in this game, we see the over-under is sitting at eight. 
that's a pretty interesting number. I think we could definitely see these two teams go over eight. I'm also looking at the San Diego Padres getting a very interesting plus 140 if you take them against the run line. San Diego is only six and seven against the run line this season. Chicago is seven and three against the run line. So don't get me wrong, this seems a little bit sketchy, but I think with Cease out there handling the ball pretty well, pitching pretty well here in the early goings, and the Padres just looking good hitting the ball in general, I definitely like the over in this game. I think that'll be my, I definitely like the over somewhat in this game, but give me San Diego minus one and a half. I think they find a way to win this game by at least two against the Chicago Cubs team that is not impressing me right now when Kyle Hendricks is on the mound. Next up, we have the Miami Marlins going on the road to take on the New York Yankees. Game two of this series really screwed us over, guys. We saw the Yankees almost come through for us, but eventually end up winning only three to two. We had the Yankees on the run line in that one. So those two runs that the Marlins scored in the seventh inning really were the death knell for us on that bat. New York couldn't get any more runs across the plate for us at all. So that three to two win, not a win exactly for us. The Marlins come into this game having an extremely rough start to their season they're only 1 and 11 overall this could end up being an historically bad team like I don't see a lot of positive things coming down the pike for this team they're handing the ball in this one to Ryan Weathers it seems weird to say that he's been a bright spot in this one when he comes into this game sporting a 4 ERA an 0 and 1 record overall and they've lost both the games that he started but he is only given up three runs in each of his two starts granted he's only lasted a combined at nine innings over those starts, so not exactly amazing. He's got 11 strikeouts, but five walks to go against those, so just in general, the guy's doing decent for being on the Marlins pitching staff, but he's not exactly dealing right now, and dealing's what you gotta do if you wanna get wins when you're pitching for the Marlins, because their offense is not really producing much. They're nearly the very bottom team in the league in on-base percentage and slugging percentage. Their team batting average is way, way down there. They don't really have anybody off to a hot start at all. Things are just not looking good. I guess the closest thing to a hot start for them would be Jake Berger and his 12 RBIs and two home runs, but the guy's only batting 261, so we're not exactly going to throw him a parade for that one. We see the Yankees come into this game fresh off of that win. They've now won four straight. I wish they could have won that one by two runs, but oh well, what are you going to do? They're handing the ball in this game to Marcus Stroman, who in his first start of the season got a little bit roughed up by the Houston Astros. None of those runs that he gave up in that game were earned, but he did give up four hits. He had four strikeouts and two walks in that one, so not a terrible performance. We did see the Yankees get the win in that game, but then they wasted a fantastic performance from him against the Toronto Blue Jays, where he pitched six innings, only gave up three hits, had six strikeouts and one walk. So he comes into this one looking hot, has to be feeling pretty good about this. He's still sporting a zero ERA since none of those runs in his first start were earned, and he's 1-0 and on the season. So the guy has to be feeling pretty good how, about how he's looking, and so do the Yankees. They come into this game. They're hitting the ball relatively well. That offense continues to round into form. They keep on winning games. They need to be scoring a little bit more than they are right now, obviously. Like, three to two wins over the Miami Marlins aren't exactly the recipe for elite status in the MLB, but... In general, they're looking pretty decent. We see Miami's only 2-10 and 10 against the run line. We see the Yankees are 7-5 and five to the run line. We also see the Yankees are tending, trending towards the under this season. They're 8-3-1 to the under, while the Marlins are 8-4 and four to the over. Give me the Yankees, minus 1.5 in this one. We're going to run it back, guys. We're trying it again. If you take a minus 1.5, you can get a plus 100. I definitely think we see a very solid start from Stroman. I don't think he's going to have a hard time against the Marlins at all. I do think that we can see Ryan Weathers struggle a little bit against the Yankees, who are going to be out to improve some of their hitting numbers after not the greatest outing yesterday. Next up, we got the Houston Astros going on the road to take on the Kansas City Royals. The Astros took the 4-3 loss in Game 1 of this series. Not exactly what they had in mind. They're going to be handing the ball to Spencer Aragetti, who's going to be making his debut. It's going to be very interesting to see what this young guy can do out there on the mound. He's a middling height right-hander. It's going to be very, very intriguing to see what he's got. The Astros need something from him right now. They haven't had exactly the start they imagined to their season, guys. Things have looked pretty dim for Houston. They're only 4-8 and eight on the season overall. Their hitting hasn't been terrible, but their pitching has let them down pretty hard. Things are just not looking good. They haven't had the easiest schedule to start the season, but also not the hardest. Like, the Toronto Blue Jays haven't looked amazing. The Yankees haven't looked dominant at all, but the Astros managed to get swept by them in a four-game series to start the year off, and losing games to the Kansas City Royals can't exactly be feeling good right now. They're going to take on the Royals again in this one, who are handing the ball to Seth Lugo. Lugo comes into this game. He's going to be making his third start of the year, and the first two guys have looked pretty good. We saw game one for him go against the Minnesota Twins. He only gave up two hits over six innings in that game, so 
so an absolutely dominant performance unfortunately he got no run support in his second start he did get dinged for some hits he gave up eight hits and six and two thirds against the White Sox but he only gave up one earned run he had three strikeouts and two walks in that one so the guy comes into this game Lugo is sporting a .71 ERA and he's 1-0 on the season so has to feel good about how things have looked right now and he can't feel too bad about it going up against the Houston Astros who whose hitters are off to such a weak start we see that Houston right now is four and seven against the run line they're seven three and one on the season to the under we see Kansas City is six and four to the run line and they are six three and one to the under the over under in this game is nine I think that's mostly due to Spencer Arigetti starting this game for the Astros so it'll be interesting to see how many runs are actually put up do we really think the Kansas City Royals are going to jump all over him I don't know guys but we're going to be on the Kansas City Royals plus 110 in this game I'm not interested in Houston minus 130 with a complete unknown out there on the mound I could definitely see taking a taste of the under in this game being worth it as neither team is hitting the ball well right now and the over under is currently at nine so that's a pretty big number but give me the Kansas City Royals as a significant lean in this one and the under as a small lean. Last but not least, guys, we've got the Oakland A's. They're going on the road to take on the Texas Rangers. We saw the A's actually get the win in game one of the series. They're now on a three-game winning streak, but that only brings them to four and seven on the year overall. So not exactly killing it out there. They're handing the ball to Ross Stripling, hoping that he could have another solid outing. He did give up eight hits his last time out against the Red Sox, but he lasted seven innings in that game, only gave up a single earned run, no walks, which is a nice look, and three strikeouts. The game before that, he did get a little bit knocked around in his first start. He four earned runs to the Guardians, so not exactly a fantastic start to a season, but clearly he settled in. Too bad that he got absolutely zero run support in his game against the Red Sox. He ended up taking the loss on that game, so he's 0-2 on the season, but regardless, the guy has been pitching pretty well, and he'll need to continue that going against the Texas Rangers, who are not having the best time. They're now on a three-game losing streak. They're handing the ball to Cody Bradford, who's had a very good start to his season. A very, very good start, I would say. He's 2-0. He's sporting a 2-13 ERA. His last time out, he absolutely dominated the Astros. He only gave up a single run over seven and two-thirds innings pitch, so a very long, very solid outing. And when you're putting up those kind of numbers, you expect to be getting wins when you're pitching for the Rangers right now because their offense is definitely clicking. Obviously, they didn't have the greatest night their last time out, and just in general over their last three games haven't been looking good, but they did get off to a very hot start to their season. They're still seventh in runs scored in the MLB overall. Their team batting average is still very good. Slugging percentage on base percentage also looking very solid. We see Corey Seager is off to a fantastic start. The guy's batting 368 right here out of the gate. We see Alderweiss Garcia is leading the team with four home runs and 11 RBIs. He's only batting around 250, so not exactly amazing on the batting average side, but he's hitting the ball hard when he's connecting. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see that the Rangers are significantly favored. They're minus 185. I don't think we're too interested in that. What we're actually looking at in this game is the over-under with the Rangers bats cooling off here and with two very solid starters out on the out there on the mound. I think it's pretty crazy that the over-under is at nine and a half. Definitely give me the under in this one. I think we see full starters continue their positive trends here from the early goings, and we'll see offense be at a premium. We like this spot a lot. That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all of your bets, and subscribe if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out stumpthespread.com, and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.